I believe that what I have to share today is a game-changing message that's going to really do something for you and through you that's going to prepare you for what God is about to do through you next. And so I want you to, matter of fact, settle everything. Settle everything around you. Put everything down. Get ready. We're about to go into a dynamic word. I believe it's a download from heaven for this season. And I'm not just preaching to you as your pastor talking about this season without giving you practical ways that you and I can see God t turn the tide of this season and this moment in the favor and the direction of the kingdom of God concerning you. So if you're ready, get your Bibles ready, do what you got to do. We're about to go into the word of God in part two of I'm over it. <laughs> All right, let's go to the word. Matthew chapter six, verse eight, New Living Translation says this. Jesus says to his 12 after hearing them or watching them or all of them or listening to some hypocrites play, pray in the street. He says, uh, don't be like them. For your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Then Jesus says, but pray like this, y'all. Our father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Verse 10 is where the magic is. May your kingdom come soon and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For the next few moments, I'm going to share along the idea of unmask your mouth. Unmask your mouth. This text, Jesus is literally with his 12 and he's discussing with them about the rudiments of prayer, the rhythm of prayer, and the way you should appropriately and honorably approach and engage the Father. He says to pray, first of all, to hallow his name. His name shall be made holy and kept holy. But then he says, pray that your kingdom come. May Pray that his kingdom comes and that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to lift a few things about this text that I feel are going to be a blessing. Number one, the kingdom of God. Let's talk about that for the next 35, 40 seconds. The kingdom of God is literally in Greek, the rule of God or the will of God in the earth. The basilia is the, the rule of God or the will of God in the earth. I'll say it again. It is the rule of God or the will of God in the earth. And Jesus says to the disciples to pray that the kingdom come. Second thing I want to tell you is this, the kingdom is is mobile. But the kingdom of God is not stationary. When he says the kingdom of come, he said, I want the kingdom or the movement to come from one point to another, which lets us know that the will of God and the rule of God exist in the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is mobile. I'm going to say that again. The rule of God and the will of God exist in the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God is mobile, which means you can bring the kingdom to a region. You can bring the kingdom to a people. You can bring the kingdom to a place. You can bring the kingdom to a city. You can bring the kingdom to a church. You can bring a kingdom to a household because the kingdom of God is mobile. But how do we see the kingdom of God activated in the earth if the kingdom of God is mobile? How do we lasso the kingdom reality of his will, watch this, and of his rule in the earth because it's mobile? How do we bring that here? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 that by faith the world was framed by the word of God. What does that mean to you and I? It's just so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible, which means God who is invisible, but yet omnipotent. God who is invisible, but yet uh, comprehensible. God who is invisible, but yet omnipotent. God who is invisible, but yet <laughs> omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time, even though tangibly you feel like you cannot see him anywhere at the same time. But because God of who he is, I, we understand by faith that everything we see exists because God said it could exist. But if it's not, watch this, if it's existing now, God made it. I'm talking to you via the lens of the internet, but God made that prior to the internet understanding or we having an understanding of what the internet is. I'm speaking to you through a camera that came from the ground. But God made that camera. How? Because God made the ground that the camera, the camera came out of. The truth of the matter is what we see has been framed by words. And words are the word of God are moving by faith. So we activate faith via our words. Watch this. It's not just the posture of what you believe in your head, but it's also what you confess with your mouth. You can believe it in 
in your heart, watch this, Romans 10, you can believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but you got to confess it to have what you say. Are y'all here? So by faith we understand, but the worlds were framed or prepared by the Word of God. Now let me stop here and parenthetically insert something to you that I believe is going to be a blessing. In the year of 2010, should I say rather, uh, December 31st of 2009, we moved into 2010 the very next day. But for many of us who live by a Gregorian calendar as believers, I believe that we are sometimes, as a matter of fact, we are often four months behind the actual Hebrew calendar. And because the Hebrews reset their calendar uh, in, in September. Now, what does that mean to you and I? Because if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I believe to really fully understand God, you must understand the Hebrew culture. Because God chose that culture and that people to express himself to creation. He chose the Hebrew culture to, uh, to express himself to what he built. And because he chose a culture that has not shifted, has not changed, whose laws have remained since biblical times, it's important for us to understand the culture, the number number system, the geometria, to really, un even the alphanumeric system, to understand what God possibly could be trying to do for his people. So in order to understand this season and this hour, stay with me, we must understand the geometria system as it pertains to numbers and years. In 2019, September on the Gregorian calendar, the Hebrew calendar moved into Rosh Hashanah, the middle of September. Rosh Hashanah is the reset for a brand new year. And in, in, in 2000, and, and 10, when we celebrated the new year, the Hebrew calendar had moved into Rosh Hashanah again in September of 2009, and they called that decade Ivin. Everybody say that with me, Ivin, Ivin. Ivin means an invitation to see. It literally speaks to an eye. The way the letter is written in Hebrew, it speaks to an eye. It speaks to vision. And so we had deemed in 2020 was the year of vision. Can I tell you, we were a decade behind with that revelation that literally between 2010 and 2020, we were in the years or the decade of vision. We were in the decade of seeing. We were in the decade of God inviting us to prophetic revelation about the future. I'm about to say something to you that's going to change your life forever. Are you here and are you ready? Here we go. In 2019, uh, December 31st, our calendar tipped over into a new decade of 2020, but the Hebrews were already there in September of 2019. And and they de de dedicated that particular uh, an assigned based upon the number of 5780. So 5780 literally speaks to, ready, watch this, pay, P-E-Y, pay, that so they coined that this neck this next decade is the decade of pay. We came out of vision into pay. Pay speaks to the mouth. It means to open wide. It's an invitation to speak what you saw in the previous decade. I'm about to say something to you right now. I believe that prophetically God has given his people as of last year, September, the license to begin to decree in the open mouth what you saw prophetically a decade prior to that moment happening. Ah, but at the same time that we moved into pay, the uh, watch this, there was a virus that came out of Wuhan that began to take over uh, much of China in that area, the Wuhan district, and they began to ask people to put masks on their face to keep the virus from transferring from soul to soul. I believe it was an assignment and a scheme of hell. Why are you asking? Why are you saying that, Apostle Kevin? Why? How could you make that claim? I'm going to make that claim easily. Because the mask is given to you to cover your mouth. Hmm. I believe with everything that's in me, it was a design from hell because hell understands systems as believers. We oftentimes move right past. He knows full well. Uh oh, let me calm down, dude. Huh? He knows full well that last September was the invitation to speak what you saw in the previous decade. Ah, what better way to frustrate your conversation than to cover your mouth? I believe that it's first the natural and then the spiritual. And and because it's first the natural and then the spiritual, it's not just about trying to keep you from passing a virus on. I think that the 
ultimate goal was to keep your mouth shut. Why does that matter? Because as long as your mouth is shut, you will pay more attention to pundits and commentaries and Dr. Who and Who and Dr. So-and-so about your own welfare, your own future, hey, your own health and the health of the people that you love. But that devil, I hear the Hammond B3, is, he, it is a liar. God is saying this is the season to unmask your mouth. Well, let me help you do that. Let me help you do that because we are in pay. And watch this. While we're in pay, you're watching this today, but the Hebrew calendar still has us in pay. 5780 until next week because when Rosh Hashanah comes, the new year changes again. Mm, you got a few days left, beloved, to start opening up your mouth and declaring what you saw last season. Hey, you need to yeah, take that mask off for a moment long enough. I don't care. Listen, you may have to be masked in the grocery store. Fine. You may have to be masked in the library. Fine. You may have to be masked on your job. Fine. But when you get in that parking lot, take that funky thing off your face and start declaring what you saw. It's time for the people of God to move in faith and start prophesying what they seen in a previous decade about what God's about to release in this one. If you believe it, shout amen. All right, watch this. This is Psalm 50, uh, the 23rd stanza of Psalm 50. And it says this, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. You need to understand that God activate whoo, the presence of God, the power of God, the vigor, the might, the majesty of God shows up when we order our conversations aright. God is into your conversation. You need to go in the chest right now and say, God is about that conversation. He is about your conversation, and he's about your conversation being ordereth aright, which means you got to speak right in this season. So, listen, it is time out for us to speak what we see. Hallelujah. You got to start speaking what you saw. Woo! You got to start speaking what is showing you in your knower. Stop, stop saying what the pundits are saying. Stop arguing what the statistics are saying and start decreeing, hey, faith over reality. Glory to God. Because our kingdom is not here, but our kingdom is there. And we usher that kingdom in by ordering our conversation aright. The word confession there literally means to say the same thing. Say that with me. I got to calm down. Confession means to say the same thing. Come on here. Come in here, church. Confession means to say the same thing. Confession also means to admit or to acknowledge belief in. To admit or to acknowledge belief in. At its etymological root, the word confession is an old French word, which has a uh, intransitive uh, vulgar Latin, confess or confessor, which literally means to admit together or to come together. So my confession always precedes my possession. My confession always precedes my possession. Say that we while you're at home, my confession always precedes my possession. So therefore, in this season, we don't claim anything. Claiming is, 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 is claiming, this time out for claiming. Claiming the promises is not faith. Faith already has it. So claiming proves that one does not have it yet. It is unbelief attempting to act like faith. I'm going to say that again. Claiming is unbelief attempting to act like faith and attempting to sound like faith. We don't claim, we confess. Because confessing in its etymological root means I am admitting that I already have it. Hallelujah. So I am admitting that no one will die on my watch to a virus. Y'all quiet. I am admitting that my family will be safe and secure from all harm in this season. I'm admitting that. I am admitting that the Bible says with long life, whoo, he shall set, hey, hey, he shall, hey, hey, I feel the glory of God. With long, ha, with long life, he shall satisfy me. I believe, and because I believe that I am admitting that that is the truth about my story. I'm admitting that I will take no L's in 2020 or 21 or 22 or 23 or 24. I'm coming into agreement with what's written about me. Are y'all here? 
All right, I'm gonna keep moving because I got us to get, gotta get us to the point where we understand that we gotta deliver our tongues in this season. Your tongue has been closed up too long. You've been coming into agreement, I'm not gonna say no names, but with CNN, <laughs> MSNBC, Fox News, OAN, or what, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, and all kinds of Twitter and social media platforms, and it's got you shook it. You've been so busy quoting what this professor said, what this doctor said, said what this leader said but you stop quoting the word hey 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 the word of God and I gotta push you back to that place because right now I believe that we're entering into the last quarter of 2020 and God is about to show up in a way that we have never seen him show up in before if you believe it shout hallelujah in the chats right now so how do we deliver our tongues? How do we activate our tongues? I'm glad you asked me. The Bible says in Mark chapter 7. Let's go there. Mark chapter 7, verse 31, and then I'm out of your hands. Here we go. It says, and again, he went from the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee uh, within the region of Decapolis. Mm -hmm. And they brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty, and they implored him to lay his hand on him. Verse 33, here's the magic. Jesus took him aside from the crowd by himself and put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, he touched, the, he touched his tongue with the saliva. He touched his tongue with the saliva, and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said to them, Ephetha, that is, be open. And his ears were open, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began speaking plainly. I'm going to give you this revelation, and then I am out of your hair. Are you ready? Come here. Come here. Come here. If you're ready, go in the chest right now. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, Apostle. I'm ready. I'm ready, Apostle Duhart. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me see it. Come on. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? You ready? Here we go. So Jesus is at Decapolis. They bring to him one who is deaf. And one who has difficulty speaking. And when I saw this in the text, what first leaped out at me is that he had difficulty speaking. And, and that suggests something. That he is trying to communicate, but he can't get words out. He's having a challenge, possibly because he is deaf. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us how long he's been deaf. It just tells us that he is deaf. It could be, I'm going to isogetically work this text for you. It could be that he may not have been born with deafness in his for hearing. It's possible that he could have became deaf. Because the Bible is very explicit. To show you if someone has been born that way from the time mm -hmm, at the time of inception if they have been or the time of conception if they have been born deaf the Bible is very explicit to tell you this person has been lame since they were a child but because the Bible says that he is deaf and that he has difficulty speaking it could suggest that at one point he was able to communicate but because of the deafness he cannot communicate anymore I'm just eisegetically playing with the text now watch this Jesus comes and they bring this young man to Jesus because he cannot hear. Notice what Jesus did. Jesus, the first thing he did was put his hands in the boy, his fingers in the boy's ear. What does that mean to you and I? I'll, 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 I'll prove it. Here it is. John chapter 1. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is not just God. He is not just the son of God, but Jesus is also the word of God. Say that with me. Jesus is... The word of God. And because Jesus is the word of God, the word of God put its fingers in his ear. I need you to catch this because you've been so busy listening to other stuff and surfing the neck with this church and that church. And they're not preaching faith. They're not even talking about anything that's within the atmosphere of what's happening in the world. But I'm telling you that faith, faith has the ability to unlock your hearing. Why does that matter? Because he that hath an ear, hey, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So the Bible also says that faith comes by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Jesus, who is the Word of God, hey, y'all ready? Put the Word in his ears. Because faith comes by hearing. You got to be careful what you can. Mm, you got to be careful what you're coming into agreement with and what you are allowing in your system in this season. I'm not trying to hate on your music. I'm not trying to hate on you on your binge watching. I'm not trying to hate on your shows. But please add some faith to the menu. Don't be so R and B'd out, and don't be so versus out that you can't add some faith to the menu. Whew. Don't be so binged on stars and and so binged on on ghosts and so. Be, 
stupid. Yeah. Don't be so binge on power and what you No, Be binging also by allowing faith to come into you. You need faith in your hearing in this season. And if you believe it, shout amen. Now watch this. The faith put his hands in his ears and the boy's ears must have opened. But the Bible also says that he had difficulty speaking. Why? Because faith had to, watch this, then the word of God touched his mouth. In this season, may you be disallowed to speak until you heard faith. Woo! I'm going to say that again. In this season, may God shut your mouth until you got faith to say something in the first place. As a matter of fact, it's illegal for you to have a conversation that's not in faith in this season. I'm charging you by the power of the Holy Ghost to be convicted in your mouth every time you say something that is not in faith. Let the conviction fire. Let the conviction power of the Holy Ghost come upon your son and your daughter now. Hey, let that thing rest in their belly. Woo! And let that thing rest in their heart until they have faith. They will be permitted not to speak in this season. Why? Because if you say it about yourself, you're going to see it over yourself. Jesus touched that boy's ears and that boy's ears opened up. And then Jesus spit in his hand, you know, the water is symbolic of the spirit of God and touched that boy's mouth and his mouth was open. Jesus said something, though, that I want to leave you with. He said these words, epitha which actually has the same root system as the Hebrew word pay, because epitha is in Aramaic, and Jews in that time spoke in Hebrew and in Aramaic, especially in the region of Christ. They spoke predominantly in Aramaic with a Hebrew root system assigned to it, and the word has the same root system and structure. It doesn't just mean be open, but it also means to be open wide, just like pay. What am I trying to say to you? I believe with everything that is in me that God wants you to unmask your mouth in this season. Take the mask off, man. Take the mask off, woman, and start declaring what you saw in a previous decade and start declaring what God is showing you now about what's to come. This is the invitation, not just to see but the invitation to open up your mouth and speak. We're still in pay. You got a few days left in pay. Let me go back to, to the scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, and I'm done. The scripture says, let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, <laughs> but only such as word as good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it would give grace to those who, who here let no unwholesome language you're not allowed to have an unwholesome dictionary in this season proverbs 21 says this verse 23 he who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul his mind his will his imagination his emotions from trouble why does that matter it matters because we only have a few days left in 5780 hear me beloved we're moving into 5781 and 5781 speaks to, still in the decade of the open mouth, but it speaks to the teeth, the way it's the, it's the, it's the alphanumeric of shin, S-H-I-N, which speaks to, it has, a, it has the, uh, the design, it's, 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 its symbol looks like teeth. Teeth are in the mouth, yes, but it speaks to precision. It speaks to judgment. It speaks to prophecy. It speaks to the sharpness and the accuracy. I believe that the Holy Spirit is allowing us uh, to, to come into a moment where our words must be prophetic. But not just that, it's with the teeth that you actually grip onto <laughs> what's in your mouth. Woo! You will be judged by what you say. You gotta get your conversation right because now you will quickly taste what you've just declared. And if it's defeat, if it's loss, if it's, if, it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's grief, if it's anxiety, you'll have it much quicker. I'm telling you, beloved, I believe it's from the Spirit of God. It's time to unmask your mouth. It's time to get your conversation right. It's time to start saying what God is saying. Come out of agreement with everything else you heard. Put faith in your hearing so faith can loose your tongue. Woo! Put the word in your hearing <laughs> so faith can come out of your mouth.